Welcome to the Sports Entrepreneur Show powered by The Ninja Zone, the only podcast for sports entrepreneurs that gives you an inside look into what it takes to turn your passion for sports into a business. Hello, everyone. I'm Scott Rudisell, and welcome to the Sports Entrepreneur featuring Casey Wright and powered by The Ninja Zone. Let's get right to it. On today's episode, Casey gets to chat with Patty Camara about lessons learned in 50 years of business. Patty's All-American is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year, opening in 1969 in the northwest corner of Indiana, just outside Chicago in what's known as the region to us Indiana folks. That in itself is amazing, 50 years, and they do it by following the most simple yet all-encompassing mission statement a business can have. Their mission statement is simply create happiness. Patty has learned so much over the past half decade, and she's excited to share it with you today. Here's Casey with Patty Camara. Hey, everybody. Welcome to The Sports Entrepreneur. I am pumped about today because today I get to do an interview with one of my role models and someone who has truly, truly paved the way for so many entrepreneurs, so many sports entrepreneurs doing things when nobody was doing them. And Miss Patty Camara has just celebrated 50 years in business at Patty's All American. So we are going to have an awesome conversation today. Patty, welcome to the Sports Entrepreneur. Thanks, Casey. I'm really glad and honored to be here. Yeah. So um, we talked before the show that um, we are definitely going to share your lessons and and the things that you've learned, which, you know, through 50 years, it's, it's certainly not going to fit into one podcast episode. But what I always like to do at the beginning of a show is ask, what are you winning at right now? That's a great question, because you know what? I am winning at semi-retirement. I am loving it. And, you know, I think the concepts or the principles that I'm using in my semi-retirement can work with anyone who wants to step away from the business a little bit, and especially women. And I know this is going to sound a little bit sexist, but in the fact that I think it's harder on women because we have the children and we have the home and we have all of this to do. And I think sometimes we all think we can do it all. And, um, and I found that it's a matter of just making the choice to just stop it, stop on the roller coaster, you know, get a nanny if you need it, you know, get a cleaning lady. I've always said, you know, ever since I've been talking to women about being in business is God forbid, if you have a 40 hour week job, get a cleaning lady because it just makes life so much easier. But anyway, I think I, I, I've kind of, um, um, felt really good about what I've been doing the last two and a half years now in my semi-retirement. And so I would like to talk about that towards the end of this, if I can kind of go through the lessons and, and, and talk about that. But, um, you know, basically, and, and let me say this, basically what I've done is I've taken my um, job description that I had before, chopped it into two, named a vice president of sales and a vice president of operations. And they've been working at it 40 hours a week. Now think about that. I, no wonder the business is doing so well. It's doing great, Casey. I mean, it, it's doing better than it was before because I'm just one person. Now I've taken, I'm doing some of it in which I have retained is the legal, the financial, the insurance, and I do help with the culture. I am still, you know, chiming in on the culture. So those four things I look at and everything else they've been doing and it's worked so well. I think so many times we say, well, no one else can do it like I do it or they can't do it as well as I can do it. Yes, they can. And oftentimes they can do it better. I 1000% agree. It's, um, I mean, it just makes sense if you, you have one great brain, but that, if that one great brain is deciding everything and, and that you, you, you lose that power that you have with multiple people and their special talents and how they work together. And um, yeah, they may not be able to do all the things in a quilt yes. like you can, yes. but that's, that's how you grow is you take these branches and you, you play to people's strengths and, and that's awesome. So with the, the, the semi-retirement, um, what does that look like just schedule wise for you? Because I know you have a place in Florida and you have a beautiful grandbaby. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you know what? I go into the gym one day a week and I work at home one day a week. 
So I put out a schedule kind of at the beginning of the month. These are the days I'm going to be there. And some people say, well, why are you doing that? You should just be able to walk in anytime. Well, of course I do anytime, but I have a scheduled day. So I schedule all my meetings and, and things I want to handle at the gym one day. And then I work one day at home. And you know, anybody does that's an entrepreneur that yeah, you can get a lot more done in your you know concentration time at home in your office than you can at the business. So that's what my schedule looks like. Yeah. Well, let's start. Let's start in on these 50 years. And I, when we talked about this, I got that picture in my head of the Justin Timberlake and um, who's the Saturday, is it? Oh gosh, he's not Saturday Night Live. But anyway, where they do like the dance through the decades. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jimmy Fallon. That's what I mean, Jimmy Fallon. Yes, yeah. Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, and that's what I pictured. Like I pictured this like patty through the decades and like what did it look like and what were the lessons through the decades? Um, but I know that you've, you've spoken about this before. So, um, I mean, we definitely, we want to know, we want to know like th- those, those, those big lessons that you, that could have saved you headaches, like really early on. We, you know, a lot of our listeners are just getting started in a business and um, yeah. So just, Go for it. Give us, give us what you got. Sure. Well, you know, um, I always like to say that they say you don't know what you don't know. And it's really true. I mean, you know, so many of these things, people say, geez, I just never thought of that before or whatever. And, you know, I think being in my late sixties, I can say that, <clears throat> that my, uh, you know, my wisdom is totally there. And it's from making so many mistakes on the way, because wisdom is just gain from making mistakes and creating some good judgment from making those mistakes. But anyway, so here we go. First of all, I like to say, be a culture saver and fire your rotten apples. Meaning that, and what I do is I'm going to tell you a lesson and then basically I'm going to give you a story behind it to tell you how it happened in my, okay. in my years. Okay. And I had a girl to work for me for 15 years and she was, oh my God, the best. She was, she was in my swim program. She was in my gymnastic program. She was gym learner, everything. She was an education junkie, which I love. Anyway, but she couldn't work with other staff people. So, you know, a lot of times in business, you have to put both your hands up, palms up, and you have to weigh it. Okay, is this more important or is that more important? Is the fact that she's great at everything she does and so valuable to the company, but she's killing the culture. So I did. I went ahead and let her go. And, you know, I don't do the whole um, Donald Trump, you're fired, you know. You know, I, 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 always, <laughs> I always say it's just, you know, our, our past are, are just not aligned. You know, we're not, um, you know, I just don't think it's working with us, in, you know, working with it anymore. And um, people would even say that she scares them. I mean, she was really kind of, you know, crazy. But the point is, don't be afraid to let people go that aren't working anymore. And um, I always like to say when they quit, that's when you need to let them go. Because so many people quit their job and hang on for years. And it's time to let them go. Yes. So, yeah, that, that's definitely a lesson for sure. Um, another one is I say, you know, to be sure you never lower wages. And you might say, well, of course you're not going to lower wages. Well, in 1981, we had 17% unemployment in Lake County, Indiana. And a lot of people wow. quit. And we had a, a big down in our um, income. And so I said to everybody, you know, we're all going to take a hit. And I lowered everybody wages, maybe like 50 cents an hour. It wasn't even, a, you know, it wouldn't even amount to one of those stupid things you do. Well, within a month, I had my two, two of my main people, a manager in my dance department and a manager of my adult fitness, which represented at that time about 600 customers. Now, they didn't walk off with them, but I'm saying that they represented the work for taking care of 600 customers. And they gave me a two-week notice right after that, and it was um, on December 21st, so the two weeks was during Christmas holiday. So I had to come up with managers in two weeks. So, you know, whatever you do, you know, you, you want to make sure you never do that because that was a stupid lesson I had to learn. Um, watch what you say on reference calls. You know, um, I got in trouble one time on um, a girl had had stolen some money. I had given her the checkbook, so to speak, for the team, and um, she had stolen some money. And so when she went to look for another job in another state, the woman called me, and I told her the truth because I'm thinking, well, I'm going to save this next employer, uh, you know, the headache that I had, and um, kind of got in trouble with that. I could have gotten sued at that point. So I think you want to stick to things that are obviously number one, truthful, but num- and which it was. But number two, um, I like to always say uh, when people are asking me questions, I- I'll say to them, you know, I think one quick question you could ask me, ma'am, is would I rehire her? And let me just answer yes or no on that. And that's one thing I use, Casey. I don't know about you, but if I make a, a call to find out, you know, on a reference, I say, you know, would you 
would you be hiring them? And that, that's a lot right there. I, I think a lot of times people aren't taking the time to really do those reference calls. And it, they're, they're so strapped for just finding employees that they, <laughs> it's like, you <laughs> It's like dating. If you're if you're too worried about finding a husband, you might pick a bad one. <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah. Do your reference. Get calls. those reference calls in for sure. Well, another one I like to um, talk about is getting security cameras. And my insurance company really, you know, I have Markel, but um, they really encourage it just for many reasons, not only for lawsuits and everything, but to see what happens when somebody says, "Well, this is what happened. Let's go back and see." But I had caught two people stealing money on my security cameras. And um, one was a cleaning service, believe it or not, came in and, you know, we got the cameras and she can see the cameras. I can't even believe it. Sat down, started going through, rifling through drawers, taking the cash drawer. I, I couldn't believe it, but yeah. So um, she did it. And then we had an employee who there was an iPad that a, a young boy had left and it was sitting on the counter in the gym waiting for him to come back and pick it up. And she took it. She, she picked it up, walked into the bathroom, put it in her like tote bag. And of course, our cameras weren't in the bathrooms, but you could see her pick it up and leave, and then she came back without it. So, you know, yeah. you're just like, oh my gosh, but it has saved us many times. And, and of course, I love it in the fact that when I travel and everything, and I'm at home, I can see what's going on at the gym. And, and, and Well, that, yeah, you know. I mean, security for one, for, for sure, but um, just even the, to be able to watch the traffic and watch the flow, yes. I mean, you could make a lot of... Just a lot of great decisions as far as, you know, when you staff the front office and how, and then obviously if, you know, your employees know that, that, you know, all eyes on me, that they're, you know, they're, they're really doing the, their best work. So even outside of security, I think that's, that's great. Yeah, I agree. In two areas, we have audio as well in the office and in the, um, gym and learn area because we have so many instances of discipline and moms will say, well, I want to see what he was doing. And so it's good to have the audio. So that worked. So yeah, that worked well. Yeah. Going back to hiring and firing people and stuff, when you fire an employee, um, we found that taking them out of our database right away because they're in Jackrabbit and we made them inactive immediately. Uh, we'd have a situation where a girl left and went to a competing gym right down the street and um, we didn't think about taking her out of Jackrabbit. So she contacted all her you know, students and said, this is where she is now and please follow her over there. And so, you know, I know people are going to hear about it, but when you get a direct email from your teacher, so I yeah. was like, make sure you do that. Yeah. And, um, uh, change the code on the alarm. I didn't even think of that. Somebody said, oh, we've changed locks sometimes when we'd fire someone that was a little bit, you know, when we'd let them go and there was a little bit of attention there. I'd say, oh, we better change, change the code on your alarm. <laughs> Somebody said that. I was like, oh, my God, that's a great idea. You know, it takes two seconds to change an alarm, not the, the changing of the, of the keys and the uh, locks. So that was something I found as well. But always looking for new people everywhere. You know, someone with passion, you know, keep your eye out for good blood um, because, you know, new blood is just great as it uh, brings into, new, you know, new staff people. I think sometimes yeah. I was afraid that, you know, new people is going to take so long to to get them involved in what's going on in the culture and all that. And boy, new blood is good. They come in with ideas and, and passion. And I think it just wakes up everybody too, when you let someone go and hire someone new. So, so I think that's a good one that I think, um, I heard somewhere that <clears throat> you should always have your next two or three hires, yeah. like in yeah. mind, right? Like even, even if your company doesn't have a role for them yet. And, I will tell you, like, there's this, I, I have two guys, there's a barista at Starbucks <laughs> and yeah. one of the, one of my trainers at the place I work out. I'm like, man, they're just, they're just special. They're just special guys. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just waiting, but yeah, that's, and you're right. New blood is, it can be, it can be a, an amazing thing. And it, it just raises the level of everybody. It does. And especially if you get rid of somebody that was very, very you know, um, valuable to the company and you let them go, everybody else kind of just sits up straighter and starts doing what they're supposed to be doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But when I hire, um, I, I, I try to remind myself too, that if you think in your gut, you shouldn't hire and don't, you know, Dave Ramsey has this line, keep crazy out of the building. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> yeah, they yeah. he interviews the the spouses, and I do that. I did that from Dave for my leadership. Oh, right. Like we, I had dinner with the spouses because they said even if they're not crazy, their spouse probably it or their spouse maybe. Oh wow, I love that. <laughs> yes, and and we, I did it with with anybody that's in leadership. Yeah. yeah we, that's great. But that's great. That keep crazy. Keep out. crazy out of the building. <laughs> well, you know what? A lot of times um, spouses and children and parents and everything that makes a difference in who it is. So I, I agree with that. I like that a lot. One thing we do for our young people, especially on our staff is we will write letters, not every year for sure. Cause then it gets redundant and not as effective, but every couple of years we will, uh, every manager will take say five or six of the young employees and write to the parents thanking them for what a great job they did in parenting and some specific things about each child, why they are so valuable to us and such a great person. And, you know, that is yeah, awesome. And you know, Casey, being a mom, somebody can come up, uh, somebody can stop, come up and say that your daughter is beautiful and you go, Oh, thank you. And then they say, when she was over, over at the overnight, she picked up all the things and she helped in the kitchen oh. and she was so polite <laughs> and your chest just gets so poofed out. Oh my yeah. God. Well, that's just like, oh, that, I oh love that. God. And teachers, when they come out, I tell them, I said, do you know the power you have that when you come out of a class and you can talk to a parent and tell that parent that that child behaved in class, was so kind, you know, did something nice for another child, whatever it is, mention that even more than the great strategy of they did on track. Because parents, mm -hmm. um, you know, I have a daughter that played professional basketball and people say, oh, Kelly's such a good basketball player. And I'd be like, oh, thank you. But just like I said, boy, my chest would puff up when they'd say something that I helped develop in her. But employees, yeah. you know, you write. So, OK, say it's an adult woman. I'll write a letter to the spouse or I will send if it's a, a man, I'll send roses to the spouse, you know, to the woman, the, the, the uh, wife. Oh, you know, and thanking wow. them for the extra time that they were on the weekend or that they, you know, we know that they've been working hard late evenings and we appreciate them or a gift card that says, you know, here, here's a $50, $100 gift card to this, you know, local nice restaurant, you know, uh, our treat because we know we've been keeping him long lately or something like that. And that, that goes far. No, yes, that that's huge. Mm -hmm. I've got tasks. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. We do. I do um, thank you cards uh, that I have on my schedule once a month um, from a lot of the people that I haven't met because I'm, you know, separate from most of my facilities. And it's like, hey, a little bird told me you were doing amazing. And that's been really fun yeah. for me yeah, because like it's just a yeah, it's a it's it's a joy when that pops up on my calendar. I'm like, oh, I get to do cards. Yeah, yeah. So oh, I like how you you time it or you, or you put it in your calendar. That's great because oftentimes oh, yeah. people Every say I need <laughs> to do it. Another way is to put ten thank you cards on your desk in front of you on Monday and by Friday, make sure that those are gone. Oh, that's good yeah. too. I yeah. love it. I yeah. love it. That will help me do it because I know, you know, I think it's Mary Kay Ash that said, uh, women, what they want more than money and sex is praise and recognition. And yeah. that's true. Yeah. And our young people today, boy, I'll tell you, I don't know if you see it. And I'm not going to use the word millennials because millennials are getting kind of old. It's not even that. I think it's the, the next generation is an alpha or whatever. But these yeah. people, oh, my gosh, they just can't be. And I don't want to use reprimanded. you got to coach with, you know, kid gloves with them. You know, I almost feel like going up saying, you know, OK, next time you do this, if it's all right with you, would you be able to put your hand here to spot? I, you can't even correct them. So. A way that I do it is um, is just to make sure they understand I care about them as a person. You know, if when they're yeah. going through uh, college finals and I send them, you know, a Starbucks gift card or something where I know. And, and when they're in the middle of it and you send it something or when it's raw, like when they're upset about something and you send something or you tell them something, or you hold them or whatever. It's powerful. It's powerful. Yeah. That's good. That's good. You know, they are the most, I, I like to really give them a little bit of a break because poor kids, they, they were, they're the most coached generation, oh, that's true. right? So that's we true. were, we like, I was a latchkey kid. Like I was fend for myself. <laughs> so to get any attention, I was like, Hey, somebody tell me what to do. But, <laughs> but if you think about it, they were overscheduled and coached. Oh, yeah, so yeah, they're, yeah. they're, their worth is built on immediate feedback because their parents wanted them to be the best at oh, everything. And they're point. really flipping smart yeah, too. Yeah. Like, so 
I, I think, you know, they get a bad rap because they're different. But if we look at, yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, intermittent feedback on everything they've ever done since they yeah, were born. And told that they're perfect <laughs> and they're a princess and they're beautiful and they're wonderful. <laughs> anyway, another thing about when you get rid of someone or hire, uh, fire them is to, uh, or any problems with them, is to keep good records in case of unemployment claims. Because I have had in the state of Indiana, which you're in as well, I have had almost every stinking one of the claims for unemployment I have lost. And I've gone through, I'll win it and I'll lose it and I'll win it. But I have learned one thing, and that is they want you to keep good records, you know, even write down when you give them a verbal comment or verbal, you know, uh, critique. And then in the second and third one, you make sure it's written down and signed. And lastly, you have to have this phrase in it. They really want you to have your job is in jeopardy. So what the problem is, and that to understand that your job is in jeopardy. So I, I think that's something that, you know, we want to make sure we, we do. We're all doing background checks. We know that because of gymnastics. And there's a lot of businesses right. that have to have the background check. But, um, so we, you know, there's times that before this, like a couple of years ago, even before we really had to have all these background checks, um, is a former Disney princess walked in the door. And I'm like, a kid, she looked like a Disney princess. She walked in to be a dance teacher. And Casey, she was gorgeous. I looked, I was like, my mouth just went, oh my God. And she says, yes, and I was a princess at Disney for years. I was like, yes, you were, honey. Anyway, so I'm thinking, Disney, you know, she doesn't need a background check. And I find out later that she was had a conviction of drunken driving. <laughs> and I didn't oh even get, you know, get an original background check on her. So even if it's a Disney princess, <laughs> get that background check. So that's that's my next hint for that, for sure. Um, in the handbook, when you first bring these people on for their on onboarding, uh, don't use language like you cannot. What I want you to use is we strongly suggest. Let me give you an example. When you're discussing wages or things that they can do, um, you know, to make more money, one thing we say is we strongly suggest you do not do any babysitting for customers or that you do not do private lessons at home because what happens if you use the words you cannot babysit children of students or of customers, you cannot do private lessons at home, and then somehow it gets by you, then when it happens and you want to take them to court or there is a court situation, they can bring that right up and say, well, I know for, for a fact that Debbie did that at home. You know, so so if you use those words, you cannot that it'll save you if you use the words we strongly suggest. And that's helped me. Um, but okay. anyway, always get things in writing. Oh, my gosh. Um, I learned this back in 1984. I remember a situation where I had a, a, a two story type building that I was renting for gymnastics in the middle and the basement area. I was going to rent to an educational preschool. And um, they, they were called Sunshine Nursery School. So they said, could I could we paint? the whole room bright yellow. And I was like, oh, that sounds great. They painted this obnoxious neon yellow and then decided they didn't want to do it. So I didn't have it in writing. I had no contract with them. Now this is yeah. back in 84. So, you know, I'm going to cut myself a little break. But um, it cost me a fortune to get that all repainted, which was already nice in the first place. But it was just something that from that moment, I always wrote, I had to get it in writing. And it was a little sign that was on my wall in my office for years. So it was something that I definitely wanted to do. And read your contracts for gosh sakes. Two of the things that I find is really irritating is the copy machine companies, the leasing companies. If you read the fine print, oftentimes if you don't give them 120 days notice, they will automatically re-up your two or three year contract. And if it's in a contract and you okay. sign it also, you know, another company that does that to me is the darn garbage collection companies. If you don't have 120 days, that's a long time. You know, you always think you got to give them 30 days or something. You have another company come in and give you a good bid on that service. And you're like, okay, I know that, you know, I'm up in July for them. Well, I'll tell, you know, waste management in June 1st. But no, I missed the cutoff time. So we put it in our calendar. We put it in our tickler file to, you know, know where to look those up. Because that's something that I had to learn the hard way when I got stuck. Um, promoting managers. Holy smoke. Promoting people and teachers into management positions. How many times have we gotten stuff? We want to do uh, a, a, an upgrade or a promotion to give someone into management, not because you like that person, but because you need a management position filled. So you normally go to your best teacher and someone who's been with you a long time. But oftentimes the great teachers do not necessarily make great managers. Yes, so you, you've got to really look at these personalities and, and, you know, do they have some emotional quotient? What is their emotional intelligence? Can they, can they work with people? What is their management ability and, and how they've worked with not just children? Because I can find 
people that work with children, great, but have no concept of how to work with adults or their peers or the parents. So, you know, same personalities are not uh, are not there for sure. And, you know, when you're working with staff, I always tell my uh, managers, whatever you do, don't gossip about other managers, other employees, because it will get back to them. And if you're the owner or you're the CEO or the boss, you say something slightly negative about someone, count on it getting to them. Just count on it getting to them. I have a line from Dr. Seuss that says, my father had warned me, don't babble, don't bray, for you never can tell who might hear what you say. My father had warned me, boy, button your lip. And I guess that I should have. I made a bad slip. Yeah. <laughs> so That's super yeah, cute. I, I had a situation where a manager is sitting with me in a meeting and we have these sit downs every six months with every single employee. I do it with the managers then the managers do it with their uh, people that are in their department. And it's basically, it's not an evaluation, Casey, where you have the, you know, how are you doing one to five and all that. The sit down is basically to say, how are you doing in your job? What do you like best? What's happening in your schedule? Yes. What, you know, yeah. what's going on with your life? Tell me what's going on. What, yeah. you know, what do you like? What do you, don't you like? Tell me. I'm here to listen. And those. That's oh huge. My gosh, it just really makes if, it I, Honestly, though, like that right there. That and the like the things like the letters and the um, just noticing doing things right. I, I in my experience, if you do those things, a lot of the other things you don't ever have to worry about. You don't have to worry. I mean, your your odds of being sued or mm-hmm. being That's taken. Right. You know, like like if you just fill their bucket, mm-hmm. then yeah, you might get a loose cannon every now and then, but most, I mean, people are generally, they, they're good and they want to be good. And that right there, it, if they just know that they have that open line of communication, it's, it's a game changer. You know, when they know you have their back, if something comes up where a parent says this child, you know, this, my child said that Miss Debbie did this and you side with the parent immediately and don't give Debbie a chance to say her side of the story or to, for her to know that you, um, are always there for her and will be side by side with her is huge. My husband was a teacher for 36 years in in a school system. And a lot of the teachers now are saying the same thing that sometimes it just didn't feel like that the administration was there for them, that it was tough. And they had so many things to do. The administration was looking for all kinds of other things, but not for their back. And so I think when their employees know that it's going to be, it's just a huge thing. Oprah always says that people want to say, you know, want to know, do you hear me? And do you see me? And I think sometimes if you just think about that, when you're in those, you know, sessions with your staff, you know, are you hearing them? Are you hearing them from their perspective? Because they just want you to feel as they feel. And that's tough. But sometimes, too, you just, you know, it doesn't matter what incentives you give them or pay or anything else. If they're not being heard, if they're not being seen, they don't feel like there's communication. And that always shocks me when they say that communication is lacking. I'm like, really? Really? We, we do so many things for that. But, but you listen to them and you say, I understand. I see, I see where you're coming from. Because each person values things differently. You know, we have a great, great list of incentives and benefits and perks that we give our employees. And I find some of them at, you know, my age, like a 401k, life insurance, different um, level of vacation time, you know, more vacation time is far more important to me. You get these young people that are in their 20s and 30s and they don't care about a 401k. They don't care about life insurance. They just want more money in their pocket today because they need to buy that car or that, you know. So figuring out what's important to them is to me, I will even say to my employees, um, with one of those sit downs, we don't talk about money. And then one time a year, we do talk about money and give the raise because we give a just a cost of living raise, and then it would be also throughout the year. Anytime we also give a raise, that would be more based on, you know, what we think their value is or that they've picked up new jobs or whatever. But we will ask them, real quickly, we will ask them, is it more important for you to have more vacation time or more pay? And you'd, Ooh, that's and excellent. you'd be surprised how many people say, I want more time off. I want more time off. Please, yes, my kids, oh, I would love more time off. So then we adjust it that way and they go away skipping because you gave them what they wanted and not what you thought they wanted. You said something great about the perks mm-hmm. too. I think, I, I, you know, perks, you can kind of get into a, um, uh, 
I don't know if I can say this, but kind of like a trophy wife syndrome where, you know, you, you stuff, 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 and this and that. And then, and the person's not happy because it's, it's, it's not, it's not their love language. (laughs) Like it's, it, you got to speak to, speak to what, what speaks to them. And, and then that engagement comes with kindness and accountability. And I think so many people, they think, well, people will work here for this. Well, they may take the job, for the stuff, right. right? Because that's what they think right. they want. But what what they really want is just what you said, to be seen, to be heard, and to be appreciated. Yeah. And to be educated. You know, I, I think I, I got into a I, I know I didn't educate enough um in my early years that it was just, you know, and I yeah. learned. <laughs> no, really. Well I had um a situation where I gave um December 23rd, 21st, 22nd, the last Saturday before every Christmas, I would have all the staff over for a lasagna party, a lasagna dinner at my house, no matter how large the staff got. And that was a big deal for me. And they always said, well, what can I bring? And I'd say, oh, don't worry about it. Don't bring anything. This is my thank you to you. And I would have them come and I would give, oh, sometimes I have a a partial choir or a a duo come and sing. I have Santa Claus come and bring gifts. I would give them gifts. I would have so many different things for them. It cost me a ton of money, a ton of time. And I just loved doing it until one year when um, my office is upstairs and an employee walked up to me and said, do you know what they're saying downstairs? And I said, no, what? And they said, what excuse are you going to use not to go to Patty's party? Oh, I tell you what, I can almost cry right now. Tears can come to my eyes when I think about that. I couldn't believe it. But I realized that that last weekend before Christmas, was very valuable to families and very valuable to employees because they might have come from um, divorced homes where they, you know, have this set of parents to go for Christmas and, mm-hmm. and they did and but they was kind of felt bad if they didn't come to the the, the lasagna dinner. So what I thought was very valuable, they were not, and maybe some did. But when I heard that, I thought, whoa! At first, I was just crushed. And then I, after years, seriously, um, of, of figuring that out, then I realized that it's not that. It's just that they didn't value it. So figuring out what your employees, and I don't care if you're a retail business, and most of us are service businesses, which is all employee-based because it's what your employee is doing, that you've got to have that person happy when they come to work. And if they're not happy, they're not mm-hmm. going to do the job that you want them to do. And they're not going to do it to their best ability because they don't want to be there. And when someone comes in and says, Patty, I want to talk to you, I always know it's one of two things. <laughs> they want to raise or they're going to quit. And, you know, and they're always so afraid to tell me they're going to move on to do something else. They're like, well, I, you know, I'm like, oh, no, that's great. Oh, my God. My, all I want is you to be happy. Absolutely. I want you to be happy. You go do that because I want you to wake up in the morning and I want you to not can't wait to get into work. I want you to love what you're doing. So I totally understand. And they kind of just sit there. Oh. <laughs> You know, yeah. but, um, you know, it, it's, it's always that thing. Um, another thing that bothers people in, in businesses, and I read this so much on business uh, emails, podcasts, and all that, is staff meetings. That's such a waste of time. Well, I had a girl one time there sitting there at a meeting, and she was, she'd been there maybe 10 years. Her arms were folded. She kind of scooted down in the seat, and she had this terrible posture. And I said, sit up. I said, Chris, please sit up. And she, she did. And I said, Wow. And she looked at me and she goes, Patty, I just don't mean to be disrespectful, but she goes, I've heard all this so much. I know where to park. I know what to wear. I know how to do warm-ups. I don't know why I need to be at this meeting. And it was kind of at first like a slap in the face. And then I thought, she's absolutely right. So then I started breaking up my staff to senior staff, junior staff, you know, and then we started doing it on video. And, we, you know, we don't even have that many meetings at all anymore. But that stuck in my head because she was absolutely right. Why was I paying? And, and I'll tell you what, you want to stop doing meetings. All you have to do is figure out what, you know, because you need to pay for them. So when you do the actual payroll, what it costs, and it's like four or $500 an hour, you know, for our staff to get together. Yeah, right. That's a ton of money. And you don't need to be saying things like, you know, you're not parking in the right place. And some of you wore black pants with a white stripe last week. And you're like, what? You know, so, so we got to, we got to handle that better. So that, that was important for me, but we started putting it all on YouTube, all our videos, for training, for um, explaining what the lesson plan is. So all that can be on. And then we put it on our group Facebook page. And we do so much through our Facebook page, our, our staff Facebook page, that uh, we are, don't have to do a lot of emails and don't have to do a lot of um, meetings. So, so that's pretty important. But you know, yeah. in a business like ours, Casey, the most important person to me at first is that front desk person. 
Because if you Uh do not create a relationship with the parent, and I tell people this, I say, if you want to make a success in your business, number one, create a relationship. If you don't create a relationship, you can end it right there with every individual that comes up. I go to my hair salon and I just give an example. They don't have name tags. And the girls that do the shampoo, I would love to give a, a, a tip to, I don't even know their name. And they don't even start out and say, oh, hi. And I mean, I'm a customer. Hi, Patty. I'm Barbara. I'll be doing your shampoo. They, they have no connection. If you don't know the person's name, that's why I think in most businesses, you need name tags. You need to have those names embroidered on your shirt or something. How can you call someone by their name? And that's the most intimate thing you can do is call someone by their name, which is so important. If you don't know it. So we have, you know, we have these, um, little five by seven plastic frames of the girl's picture of who's at the front desk with their name. So it'll just say a picture of it. It'll say Sherry. So at the front desk, when they walk in the very first time they walk in or the 10th time they walk in, they know who's at the desk. And it really helps because when our office kind of switches around, then there's Tracy at the front desk or Stella at the front desk or whoever. And so it's, it's important to, to have that. I think creating a relationship has to start with that. Another one is meeting a staff and having them feel a part of a group. You know, I want them to wear uniforms. I want them to feel that that um, they are part of a group and I want them to look unified. And years ago, I had this girl walk in with a black T-shirt before we had uniforms. She walked in with a black T-shirt with, the, I think it was a rock group of the time, Poison. And, <laughs> and it was, oh, oh, it was a, this awful black group. And she had black high top, like basketball Converse shoes. And I thought, oh, my God, I, I, ah. so we, you know, bought, you know, uniforms at the time and been doing it since back in the early 80s. So I, I think it's important, you know, everything when you talk about uniforms and getting people that work with you to look good, I always do what Disney does. And, you know, D-A-D-D, you know, not do as Jesus does. I always used to do as well. I like to do that as well. But <laughs> because Disney is the number one family oriented business in the world. So if Disney says yep. you can only have yep. two rings for 10 fingers, then son of a gun, that's what Patty's All America is going to say. If you have a tattoo, <laughs> then you need to cover it up. You can have two earrings per head. That's it. No facial earrings, etc. So do as Disney does is my mantra. So there we go. Um, we want to make sure that when you send our staff to seminars, I have them pay for part of it, no matter what. I don't have them pay for all of it, but somewhere they have to have skin in the game because they don't value it if they're not paying for it. And if I can tell you one way that that makes me feel more than anything else is when I go to do a seminar at someone's gym for years, back in the nineties, I did, I would do 23 weekends a year, Casey. I was gone all the time. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I was nuts. And um, I would do these seminars and people would call me from cross country and say, can you do a seminar at my gym? And I'd say, sure. They go, how much does it cost? And I said, I'll tell you what. I will come and do a seminar at your gym. You can invite all your staff for no cost, but I'm going to invite gyms from across the area to come in. And that's how I'm going to make my money. And they're like, fine. Well, you would see all the people who paid for that seminar straight back arms, you know, uh, you know, in the ready position, leaning forward with their, you know, note taking. And you'd see the staff from the gym laying on the crash pad or, you know, they're not paying attention. They're looking at their, you know, fingernails, like, yeah, whatever, you know. I was like, holy smoke, we got to put these people engaged more. Um, one thing I learned um, when I'm doing advertisement, I'm going to slip the, flip this over from staff to something else. We use the verbiage new customers only. So say, for instance, you're giving a free month of lessons. All right. I did not put new customers only years and years ago. And I, I remember being $700 worth of lessons because parents came in and used that ad because I didn't put new customers only. So that was a lesson learned a long time ago. But you know what I found in the last two years that's worked better than anything is we don't put free week or free month or even free lesson, but they do get second month free with paid registration. So that means they can okay. pay off yeah, the that's... registration fee, which is ours is only $39. And then they get the second month free. And I'll tell you why that works, especially for young classes I know this is going to be more for children's um, fitness classes and gymnastics and swim and things, but you've got to hook them and you can't hook them necessarily in three, four weeks. They've got to be there for like eight weeks. And then by that time, it becomes a habit and then they come back. Mm-hmm. So. so who, Patty, let me ask you, who do you, cons- who were your mentors? Well, back in the day, no, <laughs> because, yeah, you know, I always like how Ann Josephson says, you know, 
she claimed on the shoulders of the giants of the industry. And she's like a gi giant of the industry right now. But we all did. There's no way that I did not, um, you know, uh, watch other people. And, that. and of course, Jeff Metzger, he's been in it nearly as long as I have. And he's just been a huge mentor for me, as well as all the people that have been with me as the way up. But there was a girl in preschool gymnastics years ago, Carol Hammett from Oregon. And she did okay. a, a lot of seminars on how to teach parent talk classes. And that's where I learned to do preschool. I absolutely, wow. there was just some wonderful uh, programs that were out there at that time. There was a program called uh, play, Playful Purpose, Playful, oh no, I'm sorry, I can't remember. What, what about for oh. business outside of the actual mm-hmm. programming? Was that books or did you attend anything outside of the industry? I mean, because... Your operations, I mean, was that just a natural um, talent? Because, Boy, man. that is just a nice compliment that's not at necessary it. at all because it's not true. I went to every single educational thing I could find. The Richard Pryor, the there Richard Pryor seminars. I was an education yeah. junkie. If there was, I, That's what I oh. want to hear about. Richard Pryor, yeah. huh? Um, is it Richard? Isn't it? Why does that sound funny? No, he's okay. a comedian. Pryor. Oh, my gosh. Why can't I be? Anyway, it was... Stephen no, Pryor. Sure. Anyway, uh, it, I, I, for years and years and years, I would um, take those seminars. They were just one day seminars, ninety nine dollars, you know, nine to five, that type of thing. But anything in my area, Casey, I would go to for sure. Any yeah, podcast, I, any book, anything. But in our industry, there was a woman named Judy Shaw, and she has Olympiad Gymnastics in Virginia, Richmond, Virginia. Okay. And I went to a USAIGC seminar. Back in the, well, it was actually 1979 or 80 is when I went to the very first one. And I came out of her workshop, out of that session at Congress. And I was just like, I went around the corner of the room and I just, my mouth was open. <gasps> she walked out and I said, would you be my mentor? I mean, how stupid is that? Here I am. I'm like, would you uh, be my mentor? No. She's about 10 years older than I am. And I just thought she was the most genius person in business. That was totally business. It wasn't technique. It wasn't preschool. It was business. Uh-huh. And I, at the same time, I had listened to Don Robinson. Don Robinson was a motivational speaker in our industry. He was Arizona State University's men's gymnastic coach. And, okay. And uh-huh. he, he hooked me into Zig Ziglar and, you know, Wayne, Wayne Dyer yeah. and all these people. And, oh, my <laughs> gosh. And so, really, truly, when people say, you know, how, what school did you go to? No, no, no. It's every single thing you can find. Do. And those that info just doesn't change. I mean, I listen to Zig Absolutely. Ziglar and I, I, Wayne Dyer, mm-hmm. Dyer is probably on my content list yeah, every sure. week. It, it just it that is fundamental. Yeah, awesomeness. I mean the old one, Stephen Covey, <laughs> you know Jim Rohn. Jim yeah. Rohn was phenomenal. You know, yes. and those are kind of the older ones. And then, of course, everyone knows Darren. You know, I get the Darren Daly every day. You know, Darren Hardy. Yeah, and all yeah. those. But and, and you do. And if you don't do that. You do get stale, but I will tell you something else. You can, I can pick up notes from 30 years ago at a workshop and look at them, and it's applicable today because principles do not change. Do you keep I that you stuff? I do. see my office upstairs. <laughs> do you know what I have? I have it's... my attendance sheets from 50 years ago. Oh, my it's goodness It's not I don't gracious. have all 50 years of attendance sheets. But I kept the original book. Little, it's a little spiral notebook that has the attendance sheets. So I had three classes of twelve girls each, twelve kids each, and there were thirty-six kids in my first summer of teaching, my sophomore summer of my high school years. Aww. And um, I'm having a big celebration for my fiftieth anniversary soon. And four of those are coming to be honored at this celebration. So that's exciting. That's Aww, exciting. Oh, yeah. I love it. Well, Patty, we are. Running out of time, I have so six more pages. give you us can't run out of time. six. Well, then you know what? I will. Let's. I. I definitely think. Um, I want to finish this, um, because I know you have so so many more great things to give, and um, I think we just need a part two or maybe a part one, two, and three. <laughs> uh, if you're if sure, you're willing, sure, seriously, sure. seriously. But thank you so very much for being on the show. And I want you to share with everyone um, where they can find you, where they can learn more about what you have to offer with TumbleBear and everything that, you know, outside of your, um, of Patty's All American, all of your information, you put it out there for people before anyone did. And I think that is just so special and so um, just courageous because it's, um, 
that's that's not easy to do. So uh, tell everybody where can they where can they find out yes, about you? Yes, In 1986, I was lecturing at a USAIG conference, and a man came up and said, "Could I get that on tape? Do you mind, or do you have that on tape? Because you know who really needs that." Ding, ding, Joe, ding. Joe needs that. He's back at the gym. And I said, wow. So I went, yeah, ding, 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 I'm a capitalist. I love it. I'm a capitalist, Casey. I said, you can make money on it. I'm going to make money on it. I went home and my husband put up the video camera. My kids are running in and out. I swear to God. And I put it on tape, took the notes from my lecture, put them in a book and sold it for $39.95. And right now, if you go to tumblebear.com, you see 103 products that I still have. I've probably done oh, I probably I love 50 it. that I've taken out because of, they're just older and and not maybe as applicable. But anyway, uh, so yeah, tumblebear.com. If you want to email me, just customer service at tumblebear.com. And uh, that's how to get a hold of me. And I'm, I'm just so pleased and honored that you, you asked me to be on this podcast. Oh, thank you, Patty. And and really, if if we can get you back on, I would love to have you. I know you are enjoying semi-retirement and I want to hear even more about Sounds that. Great. So well, thank you. Have you a too. good one. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. We will definitely get Patty back on the show for more. I love the lessons and hope you paid attention. There is definitely something to learn for everybody. Be a culture saver. Fire the rotten apples. When they quit, it's time to let them go. Keep crazy out of the building. Remember your staff's spouses. Educate yourself all you can. And finally, principles do not change. Great stuff and congratulations, Patty, on all your success over the past 50 years from all of us at the Sports Entrepreneur and Ninja Zone. All right, that's it from us. We really hope you are enjoying the Sports Entrepreneur podcast so far. Each week, we try and give you helpful information about business that you can apply as you grow in and within your own company, no matter your position. And if you go to thesportsentrepreneur.com and search for this episode, you can click on the red button at the bottom of the page and then be notified every time a new episode goes live. And we will also automatically send you any bonus content that we produce each week so you don't have to go and find it. Good stuff, right? And if you have any feedback or comments, Please share them by commenting on our website, thesportsentrepreneur.com, or by emailing us at podcast at theninjazone.com. Like what you hear? Please leave us a review on iTunes, like our page, The Sports Entrepreneur, on Facebook, share the love by sharing our podcast on social media, and help us help others by spreading the word. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next week.